Good morning, everybody. Higher trade in the grain markets here on Thursday. It is 6.30 a.m. Central Time. March corn futures up three cents at 6.49 and three quarters. March soybeans up 26 and a quarter at 16.21. March Chicago wheat up eight cents at 7.93. March Kansas City wheat up six and three quarters at 8.21 and three quarters. March spring wheat up nine and a quarter at 9.63. If you guys are listening on the podcast, leave me a rating or a review on that Apple podcast app in particular. If you are watching on YouTube, guys, subscribe to the channel, like these videos, leave me a comment, help me to grow this channel. It would be much appreciated. Appreciated. If you need some additional assistance from me, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Go to that website, click on Grain Marketing Plan here in the upper right-hand corner. I send a ton of information out to my subscribers every single business day, morning email, text message service, subscriber-only videos, all of my grain marketing recommendations. Um, I did a subscriber-only video yesterday, of course, uh, regarding the USDA report, and uh, I send out very timely information on report day. Uh, my customers had a video review of the report, I believe within 20 minutes of the release, and uh, they had all the, the data uh, very, very very shortly after the release. So if you're interested in that, along with a, a number of other things re regarding grain marketing, um, let me know, guys. Uh, sign up for that subscription deal. You can cancel it at any time. The Brazilian government absolutely slashed its soybean production estimate this morning. I thought this was a typo when I read it. Conab pegged the Brazilian soybean crop at 125.5 million metric tons down 15 million from the 140 and a half last month. USDA was at 134 yesterday. This is an absolutely massive decrease. It is one of the lowest estimates for the Brazilian soybean crop out there among any entity, both public and private. Conab made only a minor cut to its corn estimate. Uh, that crop was pegged at 112.3 million down just marginally on the month. But guys, this is a big deal. If this is the real number, uh, this is a game changer for the market. In my opinion, this is much, much lower lower than uh, what the, the U.S. government printed yesterday. The U.S. government, USDA, was at 134, and I'll talk about that in a second. But guys, the Brazilian government saying that this uh, drought in the South essentially is the real deal. It's had a massive impact on the crop. Keep in mind, this is a crop that we believed would be ultimately you know, somewhere in the mid-140s uh, ahead of the growing season, and now we're talking mid-120s. This is a big, big, big deal. If you saw the soybean market spike at 6 a.m. Central when this thing came out, uh, this is the reason why. So we did have a USDA report yesterday, and it did not feature any major surprises at all. Uh, as expected, USDA cut its projection for the Brazilian soybean crop. It cut its projection for the Brazilian corn crop. It cut its projection for the Argentina soybean crop, left the uh, the uh, Argentina corn crop alone. Now, a couple things of note here. The, the This is the stuff that was interesting to me. I mean, I can run you through all these numbers if you want, but uh, this is the stuff that's interesting to me. So USDA reduced soybean export projections for Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay by a combined 209 million bushels. So 209 million bushels less exports out of Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay combined. Despite that big decrease, USDA left the projection for US soybean exports unchanged. Old crop soybean exports out of the US unchanged despite those big cuts to the export forecasts for uh, those three South American countries. So. USDA is essentially telling us here that the demand lost or the exports lost as a result of this lighter South American crop is not going to be uh, seen in the U.S. It's not going to shift to the U.S. is what they're saying. I think there's a lot of uh, questions uh, regarding that. Uh, will China and other global buyers come to the U.S. market, especially now that we're seeing these drastically lighter estimates for the South American crops and Brazil in particular, given that CONAB report this morning? So this is a fluid situation, guys. Um, in other news, USDA did increase on the domestic balance sheets. They increased their crush estimate for soybeans. They actually, again, left the export number unchanged. Wheat, they cut exports and uh, food demand. They left the U.S. corn balance sheet totally unchanged. So that USDA report yesterday, guys, I mean, pretty much uneventful. One other note uh, in USDA that I left out, USDA left its forecast for Chinese corn imports unchanged at 26 million metric tons. Uh, China's, or the USDA's China uh, attache office reduced that estimate to 20 million last week. So the, the official government estimate's still at 26, but the office in China is saying, no, it's at 20. Uh, we'll see if USDA makes an adjustment uh, in their official numbers here at any point in the future. 
The Biden administration may use new tariffs in regard to the failed U.S.-China trade deal. U.S. Chamber of Commerce officials said yesterday that the White House is considering a range of options. If talks over China's unmet purchase commitments fail, tariffs are one possibility. The administration may also work more closely with Europe and other U.S. allies in order to present a united front to Beijing. Myron Brilliant is the chamber's head of international affairs. He said this regarding ongoing talks with China, quote, But should those talks not succeed in meeting the terms of the agreement, then I do think there are vehicles by which the administration can consider taking further action. The administration is considering a range of options, and we're not endorsing any of these options at this time. That could include, obviously, a 301 action and issues like that, end quote. Um, He said that short-term tariffs are not likely. Uh, The Trump administration used those Section uh, 301 Uh, rules as part of the 1974 Trade Act in order to launch tariffs on U.S. imports of Chinese goods in 2018 and 2019. Um, Are we going to spark another trade war? I don't think so, but uh, uh, additional tariffs would probably not be a positive. U.S. ethanol production declined to its lowest level since October last week. Uh, Ethanol stocks did decline as well. Weekly ethanol output 994,000 barrels per day. That was down 4.5% on the week, up 6% versus the same week last year, and down 3.8% versus the same week in 2020. Ethanol stocks declined finally again after five consecutive weekly increases. Uh, Seasonally speaking, ethanol stocks are all-time highs. We've never been this high at this point in the year. Margins for the U.S. ethanol producer continued to hover around break even. Chicago Platts ethanol futures finished at 211 per gallon yesterday. They peaked at 345 per gallon in late November. So you've seen an absolute collapse in the price of ethanol. So expensive corn plus cheap ethanol equals poor margins for U.S. ethanol plants, guys. Their margins, I mean, they hover around break even, and that's not totally abnormal historically. Uh, subscribers, I had some ethanol margin charts in the newsletter this morning. Certainly check that out. A highly pathogenic bird flu was reported at an Indiana turkey farm. The flu was discovered in southern Indiana, about 70 miles west of Louisville. This is the first such case in a U.S. commercial poultry operation since 2020. Importers have already taken action. China and Korea blocked imports of non-heated poultry meat from Indiana. Taiwan restricted poultry meat and egg products from the state. Indiana said that the strain of the virus was the H5N1 and was the state's first case of uh, the bird flu in commercial poultry since 2016 when 400,000 birds were killed. A wide enough spread of this bird flu could have an impact on feed demand, I suppose. I don't think we're nearly that far along, but uh, certainly something to keep in mind. A shortage of a key weed killer in Brazil could threaten the country's second corn crop. Brazilian groups representing corn growers are reporting a shortage of the herbicide atrazine, which is used to control weeds and corn crops. In a joint statement, there were two groups who said that they had received multiple complaints from growers across Brazil about unexpected cancellations of deliveries. Uh, This was a quote from their statement. The shortage of products in the Brazilian market puts the second corn crop at risk. So this is just another supply chain issue, it sounds like. I hope we don't get to this uh, sort of situation in the United States uh, this spring and summer when it comes to fertilizer and and other inputs, all that sort of stuff. Brazil's second corn crop typically accounts for 75% of the country's corn production, so this is a big deal if it has a material impact on the crop. Brazil is the world's third largest corn grower behind the U.S. and China. China did buy some more U.S. uh, soybeans yesterday, again for new crop delivery, about 9 million bushels for the 22-23 marketing year. There have now been a total of nine soybean flash sales reported since February 1st. Of that total, six have been for new crop delivery. All have been to either China or unknown destinations. So China very much interested in new crop beans, uh, more so than old crop beans. Why is that the case? Well, the inversion, the fact that old crop beans are a buck and a half or or whatever over uh, new crop, that's got to be part of it. And maybe they think that Brazil and South America will be able to fill their needs uh, until you know we get to September. But again, given these drastically lower production estimates for Brazil and for Argentina. Uh, Maybe China's going to have to come back to the U.S. before September 1st. We'll see what happens. I also heard some trade chatter yesterday suggesting Chinese interest in old crop U.S. corn. Heard a number of different rumors uh, regarding Chinese interest. Uh, One 1 million metric ton up to 4 million metric tons for spring summer delivery. Keep an eye out for flash sales today or tomorrow. The government will release uh, monthly consumer inflation data this morning at 730. 
Trades looking for 7.2% uh, is is the CPI number that's expected, and that would be the annualized change in, change in inflation on the consumer side in January. That would be the highest level uh, of inflation on the consumer side since 1982, if confirmed. These inflation numbers are hugely important these days. They may dictate Fed policy to some extent, and Fed policy is a huge deal for every market on the planet, in my opinion. We do have an export sales report this morning. Uh, Current marketing year sales expected corn 500 to 900,000. Soybean sales expected 900 to 1.5. Wheat sales expected 100,000 to 400,000. 400,000. Cattle market was higher yesterday, had a good day. Uh, fat cattle up uh, at least a buck across the board for the most part, and feeder cattle were higher as well. Um, uh, cash cattle 138 to 140. The boxes were down a buck or two. In the outside markets, the uh, US dollar is just a little bit higher. Stock market's mixed. Bonds are off. Crude oil is up 70 cents at 90.36. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.